unload, shake out, and check for centers. Okay, the office building has space for staging or shaking out steel. So let's just take the position that we are going to be yarding our steel while we wait for the concrete contractor to do their thing, which they will be setting anchorable embeds, embeds, and raising tilt-up concrete panel walls. While they do their work, we will yard our steel or stage our steel based on our sequence direction. Hey, just wanted to stop you and tell you, thank you for watching. It really does support us when you watch. Take the extra step, like and subscribe this video and or follow us. It would really help us out. Carry on, enjoy the rest of the video. Check us out at workerefficiency.com for more videos just like this. See ya. The first sequence of steel we will install for our building is in grid lines F to H and 2 to 4 for our structure. This entails the 4 columns, 48 beams, and 10 bundles of deck, which we have referenced a thousand times at this point. And we will want that steel staged as a group. Our steel just rolled up on the flatbed, let's yard our steel. Let's unload, shake out, and check for senders on our steel. Once the material arrives on the truck, the person who receives the material will have a load list. That list should have the job number, ship marks, piece marks, material size, lengths, and any other markings pertinent to the load for the job or the sequence of our steel. The driver will also have a list that mirrors the list of the receiver, so there shouldn't be any confusion for what is showing up on the job. Compare lists. Before the material is unloaded, the receiver should inspect the material for damage that could obstruct the integrity of the material. Check for markings on material to ensure that the job number, ship marks, and any other markings match the information indicated on the load list. Again, it's important that the team on site has all the appropriate drawings for the structure, sequence plans, and so forth so that they can reference them whenever needed. Now that you have verified the material, you, the receiver of the material, can sign off on it. You can then unload, shake out your steel, which is just ironworker's term for staging or yarding your steel per your sequence. Shake out material. I think at this point we have beat you to death for organization in your load lists, and now that same organization should translate to your staged steel. When staging material, try to keep all beam numbers and markings on one side or upright facing out for easy viewing. This will expedite picking material because you will be able to see everything easily. Group sequence steel based on your erection schedule. If we are setting four columns, then girder beams and intermediate beams in one day, have your columns grouped on dunnage together. Have girder beams just adjacent on dunnage, and then have your intermediate beams grouped on dunnage close by as well. By grouping steel and keeping your markings face out, you won't have to chase down numbers on the opposite side of the beam. As mentioned, everything staged must be propped up on wood dunnage and not be on the bare ground. Check for centers, stuff bolts, attach cantonary lines. Checking or marking your center is one of those things you can and should do prior to offloading steel on the flatbed if you are using a crane to do so. If you are going to lift a column straight from the truck for installation, then prior to lifting, you should take your measuring tape and throw it across your steel and mark the center of your steel with the line indicating center of steel. Doing this will make your rigging time more efficient. For symmetrical loads like the ones we will deal with the majority of the time, a simple line like this will save you a lot of micro adjustment time for shifting your rigging material to find the center of gravity for your steel. You see the line, you know your hook block needs to go right above that and slings go equidistant out from there. Refer to the rigging section of the course if you have questions. Stuffing bolts. Along with marking the centers of our steel, we are also going to stuff bolts. This does not mean we are putting bolts into every hole. This means we will be adding minimum amount of bolts needed to loose our steel from the rig once lifted. Let me explain. Let's say we have all our columns in and we are setting this beam to 28A. Here is our drawing which sits between these two columns. Our assembly sheets show the detail of this beam. We have six holes on either side of the beam. Our column assembly shows what we call a clip with the same six holes. So we can bolt this beam to this column and the adjacent column. In our beam that is staged on the ground, we are going to stuff a TC bolt in the top hole and in the middle hole. We'll do the same thing on the other side of the beam. The standards of cutting the crane loose from our steel requires we have two or more connection points on either end of the steel. Obviously that depends on the size of the steel, but typically a bolt per four holes is a good base. Having two stuffed bolts on either end of the steel allows us when connecting to pull those bolts out quickly, restuff them, tighten them up, and loose the crane so the crane can set another piece or go pick another piece of steel. The connectors would then immediately stuff the remaining bolts to secure the beam completely. We would never just leave the beam like that for extended periods of time. If you stuff for every hole prior to lifting, the connector will need to remove all the bolts just to restuff them, taking precious time. Stuffing two bolts is a happy medium for efficiency in loosing the crane, and also are four less bolts in the connector's bolt bag, saving their back a bit. 
bolts should be stuffed in a particular direction, but we'll get into that more later. Now, you won't always pre-stuff bolts, but when you can stuff for a minimum, it will help you in efficiency. So stuff one bolt per four holes or typically two holes on either end of steel. Lastly, along with marking centers of steel and stuffing bolts, we're going to add cantonary lines to our seal if this is something you plan for, possibly in your site safety plan. It's not uncommon for girder beams or header beams to come from the shop with holes in the top flange of the beam, so we can install cantonary lines or safety cable for the connectors to tie off to as they erect the building. That is what cantonary lines are for. It is a safety cable we can line the beam with and provides a means of fall protection for us as ironworkers. When we are connecting the skeletal framework of a structure, this structure is fresh, so fall protection needs to start somewhere, and this is typically it. We would attach our lanyards to the cantonary lines as we walk across beams, connecting other beams as we go. Setting cantonary lines is not always something that will be done, but can be a step in our dressing. Marking centers, stuffing bolts, and adding cantonary lines to steel is what we call dressing steel. Dressing our steel and preparing all we can before we rig and connect will help our bottom line for time. Instances when connectors are waiting at the top of columns for 15 or more minutes while a rigger below tries to find the center of a beam is mitigated. Connectors having intermediate bolts stuffed in the beams already avoids overloaded bolt bags and quick connections, and safety line prepped and in place makes for accessibility when up on top for our iron workers to be safe and secure. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate it. Like and subscribe, follow and share this video. It really does help us out. If you want to learn more, check out www.workerefficiency.com to find out more about our training courses and the app that is coming out soon and it will blow your mind.